Uh, okay, hello everyone. Welcome to the JS Core Dev Team Weekly Sync. It is January, it is the 14th, uh, it's 2019. Uh, if you are here, please put your name on the attendees list on uh, the hackpad. I will paste the link into the chat now. It is there. Um, we have a note taker, it is Volker. Thank you, Volker. Um, and so, what do we do next? Uh, what we normally do is we do a weekly update where we tell each other what we did last week, uh, what we are blocked on, and what we plan to do this week. So I'm just going to work from the top. Um, and uh, yeah, if you haven't put your weekly update down on a hackpad, then please do. And uh, since I am listed first, I will just quickly go over what I've been doing. I was on holiday last week, so I haven't done much, but I've done some things today. Um, I, well, actually, last night I opened a pull request to uh, remove the in-memory utility from IPLD. Um, it's uh, it's kind of good because it means that IPLD is less dependent on IPFS, which is which is great. Um, and uh, I essentially did that because I built a module called IPFS only hash, which uh, which came out of a request from a few different people who wanted to be able to just get the hash for a piece of data uh, without having to like install a whole IPFS uh, or run an IPFS node. Uh, so like uh, for scenarios such as like uh, IoT, I guess, I'm not sure exactly why they would only want the hash and not want to add it to IPFS, but it has been requested multiple times. So there's our module which does that. It's just enough code to generate you a IPFS hash for a piece of data. It's basically the UnixFS importer module. Um, so I've been doing some dependency wrangling uh, to try and get 034 release released. Um, Whilst I was away, libptp crypto um, got updated again. So just changing a few or updating a few modules to get that um, get that all the same version. Uh, we have many modules that depend on it, uh, and it is quite big. It's like 200k, I think, gzipped. So it is worth not having multiple versions of it in our bundle. Uh, so there, and then yeah. So last week, which I didn't attend because I was on holiday, but I, there was an issue which was blocking 034 from being released because of like control signals, um, and it was because like uh, multiple event emitters were being added to uh, like over 10, and so the warning was coming up in Node, and that was causing the build to fail for, or the, sorry, the test to fail for for kind of a different reason. Um, anyway, that's now fixed, and I've got another problem. <laughs> the uh, the bandwidth tests are now failing, and whilst I was gone, I think some modules got updated again, and uh, the uh, I found out now that um, big number or big .js has been swapped out for big number .js, and so uh, some of the modules have that change, and others don't, and so uh, our tests are failing. So I need to resolve that again. Okay, so next week, uh, this week even, uh, what I will plan to do is I've got some stuff to do for getting the timeline sorted for JS IPFS roadmap, get the get those OKRs and things all finalized. Um, I need to, there's a bunch of emails um, for reviewing the uh, ben benchmark mark work that has been done by Mirform. So I need to get, get in and look at those. I've been basically doing a, a bit of backlog clearance today. Um, I want to release 0.34 this week, if possible, and if I have time, I will start the CID version 1 base 32 by default work, um, which I've linked to the step uh, that, that I'm describing uh, in, in the issue with a main tracker issue for, for this kind of, all of this work. Um, so that's me, hooray! Um, does anyone have any quick questions before we move on? Okay, uh, so uh, as David said earlier, Vashko and uh, Jacob aren't attending this week, so uh, I'll leave you to read through Vashko's update uh, in your own time. Hugo, you are here. Would you like to give us an update? Of course. Hi, guys. Hi. So, hey. Um, I've been working on the multi gashing async. Uh, doing porting the API from callbacks to promises, not really iterators because it doesn't need it yet, but it probably will. But for now, 
it's all promises. The PR should be up uh, today. I also had a call with Alex from the forum to handle the endeavor um, for the CI part and the CI integration. Um, talked a little bit about um, the whole benchmarks uh, repo uh, and he answered all my questions so we should be good to go for now during this week i'll dig more into it uh, but yeah uh, i also did some research and brainstorming with uh, falcon and other people about uh, supporting a repo first and typed arrays internally and uh, on the api I'm still uh, trying to figure out the best way to do it um, and getting a feel for it. I use the multi ash async repo to do that. That's why the, the podcast it's not up yet. I need to clean it up with the uh, with the with the stuff about the repo first. Uh, but I'll make a proposition shortly so we can think more about. Uh, how can we support that stuff and also smart support node buffers at the same time? Um, and yeah, also the bundle size pull requests, uh, the P2P repos are giving me a little bit of, of troubles, uh, especially the Amplex repo. Uh, it should have, uh, everything should have uh, been passing right now, but it's still some issue with Switch and Amplex with the, the less, latest changes, so I, I'm trying to fix that. Uh, but everything else, or almost everything else, is already uh, merged and released. Right now, it's only a matter of getting Amplex fixed. And uh, the, I think that only repo, IPFS, and HTTP client are missing. Uh, and of course, uh, libphp uh, is also missing, but that should be uh, easy to do uh, when I make uh, Amplex pass the test with Switch. So the rest of the week, I'll be finishing uh, finishing up that, and I will be integrating the benchmarks uh, trigger uh, on the the CI pull request that we have for GitLab and Travis and so on. And that's about it. Anyone has any questions? No, thanks. Cool, thank you, Hugo. Uh, cool. Uh, cool. Volker is next. Would you like to give us your update? Yes, so in the past week I catched up after holidays and then um, I'm still working on getting the new IPLD API work on IPFS. If someone's wondering why it takes so long, I do several things at the same time, which I probably shouldn't. But um, yeah, I come to this later. Um, during this, I also found out that there are some modules because there was a, like uh, the IPFS tests on master were, were uh, failing. And there was a bug in IPFS Unix FS importer. And I found out that there's only one maintainer um, in the NPM module, so I couldn't do a release. So we should really make sure that we have multiple maintainers for all the modules we have. Um, I guess something like, for example, I propose that it should either be like the the, the lead maintainer and the and the tech lead, or even the top level re repository owner. So in this case, it would be Ellen as the JS IPFS maintainer, because then you can release anything you want um, if there's any issues. Except for this case, it wouldn't have helped because neither Ellen nor X would have been there, but <laughs> uh, hopefully, <laughs> normally one of those two people are there. But just I want to bring it up that we need to go, th should go through all the modules we have, we own, to see that we don't have those issues. Anyway, it's fixed now. Um, next, I will work on implementing tree for JS IPLD. I thought originally I don't need it, but I need it also for making the tests, the current tests pass. And the other thing is, yeah, just getting all tests pass on the new API. And another big thing is that I want to have agreement on, so far most people agreed, but I also want to have agreement from those that were on holidays, that I propose that the multi-codec, that we change it from being a string, like um, DEC Seaboard or DEC TV, 
into being a constant, which is in the background just a number. Um, and I will also propose it to do this for the CIDs. Um, that's those things that I currently do in parallel to my IPLD work as I go through all the APIs, cleaning those things up and um, yeah, therefore it takes a while, but I think the outcome is quite nice to have a better code base. All right, uh, that's all I have. Any questions or comments? David? Uh, I have a comment. Um, so I just noticed like there's like 308 projects using just IPLD directly. Uh, some of those like are our own, like our own modules. It doesn't count. But like it's like, our own is like less than 30. So like there's still like more than 270 projects out there that are using IPLD directly that we never really like touched on. And so given that like there's now breaking changes on this API and like some of those projects are pretty developed. Like uh, I, I recognize some names from some PG theses that I've read uh, or some other projects I see in the wild uh, on the Reddits and the Hacker News. So like perhaps reaching out to those projects that have active teams working on them and ping them for feedback, just like getting them involved with the project uh, would be really useful. It's, it's something that we, we all overall need to get better at. Uh, and like sometimes we forget that like our users is not just ourselves. We actually have like a really large community. Uh, so yes, this is like another piece of work to do and like one that takes a lot of time. But, um, but like consider like if you find the space, the mind space, the space on this, uh, your calendar to, to just like go through these 300 repos and like see how active these projects are and just like um, ping people. How, uh, how I think can you find those uh, repos because normally I go through the published NPM modules and see, see the Zoom chat? Hmm? See Sorry? the Zoom chat? Uh, yes. Ah, okay. There's like, yeah, there's like a GitHub dependencies thing that really helps because it, it gives you a little bit more information sometimes about the people that are using it. Another thing too is like, you should do an alpha release that's in a major, like in the next major, do an alpha release. And then when you ping them, you can say, hey, do you, can you try this out and tell me if it actually does everything for you and if it would work? Um, so that you're not just showing up with like, oh, hey, we have this idea for, for an API. Like they have something to poke around at. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so like this, yeah, exactly. The link here is on, on the Zoom chat. Just check it out. Um, yeah, you can find a lot of projects from like the EUASM project to Parity to Orbit to Akashka to a lot of things that I don't know what they are, but they sound interesting. Uh, so check it out. Uh, so I just had a question, not really a question, a few, a few questions. Could you put a link to the a I API pull request on in the notes for everyone? Um, and also, is there so the, you, is there a proposal for JSCID? Is there a pull request for that yet, or are you still to do that? No, um, it's still on my to-do, so therefore it's on the uh, uh, next week part. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> cool. Okay. Um, perfect. Um, and then, like, on in, in more generally with the point on, like, making changes so like when we renamed the ap ijs ipfs api to ijs ipfs http client uh we there there are a lot of people using the old one and i don't think all of them have moved over yet and um, i need to basically try and move other people over so in general we sort of need a way of like or some scripts or something to like get all of those people who uh who um who, who are depending on our project and be able to like open a pull request or an issue at least um, on like all of those repos to sort of encourage them to move or encourage them to do something. And that would be really useful, but probably against GitHub's terms of service uh, in some way. Uh, I, d I don't know, but um, I will uh, look into that or I was hoping to look into that at some point um, to try and um, get, uh, the, all the people who are still left behind on JS IPFS API um, to, to move over. So I will post the results of that here or somewhere or wherever when, when I get around to it, hopefully. 
So if it is against the terms of service to launch like, you know, hundreds of pull requests, which it probably is, uh, or, or it, identical issues, which it probably is, uh, one option is that you could just use the data that you pull from that to pull in who are the maintainers or owners of all those repos and then just ping them in an issue to let them know. So it's, it's like, it's not as nice probably, but um, it's probably within the terms of service. Yeah, that's a good, that's a good idea. Yeah, cool. All right, thanks, man. Um, okay, cool. Any other questions for Volker before we move on? Perfect. All right. So who is next? We've got Alex. Would you like to share your update? Hi. So uh, yeah, I was out last week. Um, today I've been catching up on the thousands of emails that have been generated uh, over the last week. Uh, I've merged the fix that Volker mentioned for um, the Unix West importer. Uh, next up, I'm going to merge all of Alan's PRs for the in-memory IPLD change. Uh, do some prep for the uh, package managers kickoff tomorrow and review the IPFS benchmark stuff that near from open day. That is going to be me. So, any questions for Alex? Okay. Um, thank you, Alex. Uh, we have uh, Zane, is it? Yeah. Yeah. Cool. So um, basically, spent some time catching up, been away from the product for a while, so looked through some issues, um, and then decided to pick up JS IPFS repo. Um, that has a dependency on like data store as well, um, so I might look at another project because I saw that I think, Alan, you're working on the data store sort of refactor. Um, so if there's anything of sort of low level that's sort of critical so that way the higher level projects like IPF repo can get done. Uh, I'm looking to pick that up. Um, also diving in the JS lib P2P circuit async await um, interface change. Yep. Um, that's it. Cool. Yeah. The So I did the interface for data store I think or I sent a pull request at least and I sent a pull request for one or maybe two of the data stores that we have already. So like a low hanging fruit would be to do a similar thing to some of the other data stores that we have basically following what, what was proposed. Um, that would be a really easy, easy thing to, uh, to dive into. But if you are looking for more than that, then um, give me a shout after this call and I will try and pick something that might be relatively kind of easy not too challenging or, or do you want to work no i mean the data store thing is fine i just cool. didn't see the full request so i was like well okay well i can have this dependency so where is this at yeah not gonna okay happen. cool uh feel free to like ping me on irc or um or, or slack or whatever um okay. uh, if you get stuck cool um actually is there a slack non sequitur i've never there is a Slack. Uh, it's probably best to get me an IRC, to be honest. Okay, cool. <laughs> I'm, I'm, so are you on the developer's IRC? Uh, no, actually. Uh, so IPFS, I think, dash dev, yeah, on IRC, on Freenode. Um, and yeah, you should just mention me there. We can, we can chat. Um, okay. Cool. Any, uh, does anyone else have any questions for Zane? No. Cool. Uh, so next up is uh, Alex uh, out on January 15th. It's not, is Alex here? No. Cool. Okay. So there is, there, uh, he's left his update here. And then, uh, and then we've got Ron, who is here. How are you doing? Doing pretty good. Yeah. Um, let me open this back up. Um, so yeah, just one thing on Alex, he is, we're kind of blocked on, we need one of the ports opened up for the rendezvous, rendezvous server um, on our controller VM. Um, so I put a link into that one on his block section. And there's also another question about just logging, just when you guys get a chance to that. Um, so as far as the benchmark testing went, so we added a, uh, and I'm not sure, if this was even a week before prior to this, but we, anyway, we added multiple peer browser tests um, and it was working locally fine. Um, after I 
got some, we were basically, we were having, we had the old version of lib P2P. So locally I fixed that one and it was, it was running fine. Um, and then when I went and actually put it on the server, forgot about that piece. And so we actually took a while to troubleshoot what the problem was with it. So, um, so yeah, so Alex and I both worked on just troubleshooting that, fixing um, our install, our deploy scripts. Um, there's still, there's still an issue with it, and Alex is going to work look at that one also this week. Um, so we have an open issue in, in benchmarks on that one. So yeah, um, so yeah, so did a lot of troubleshooting, a lot of fixing on just the deployment piece of it. Um, so, but. If it does run successfully, it actually does show up in the in the on the dashboard um, with the browser peer to peer testing is there. So um, this week I need to refactor some of the browsing tests. I'm going to add um, make the test more basically build them as a component now in the React app. Um, it'll just make it easier for when you guys are adding new tests. Um, also need to so I also created a presentation for our meeting coming up on Wednesday. So on how to add tests, and we're going to go through each of the node go and the browser tests. Um, so I worked on that presentation and I need to update it after I do this refactoring. Um, and yeah, and that, that will be coming up Wednesday. So, and we can answer more of the questions about, you know, how the tests are working as you guys are looking at them. So um, yeah. And then after that is just adding more tests and any more troubleshooting that needs to happen. So that's it. Cool. Okay. Thank you, Ron. Any questions for Ron? Cool. Okay. I, I hope to look into this this week uh, a little bit um, as well. And so I'll probably come back to you with some questions. Um, cool. So that's all of the people who are listed in the uh, weekly update. Uh, does anyone else have any um, updates or things to say or questions or, or anything else? Aaron. Hey, yeah. um, we've been seeing some, um, kind of trolling on the preload nodes. And <laughs> uh, essentially it's just someone that's like scripting, uh, hitting a the API for a particular slew of hashes. And um, it's a handful of IPs that are like thrashing. Um, it's not really what the nodes, the preload nodes are for. So not sure. The best uh, route, there was one over the weekend that I just um, blacklisted for a little while, but of course the IP is back. So um, yeah, can I just block these IPs at will uh, when they seem to be taking down the nodes or, mm. yeah, Lido. Uh, are we able to like throttle like per IP or something like that? Cause, um... Like sure. w it's always like a whack-a-mole, and if we have some throttling mechanism, then, then we that may be more effective in the long run. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, what's like a throttle light that's a reasonable throttle? I could have it as a delay. David. David. Um, also, like, so people can totally abuse this. Like, it is just like literally open genesis.ip.io, go to the field that says cat and ash, and I like, just put like a, a giant file and send only the preload node that I'm like loading to provide into it. So, uh, we, we need to, it, it's kind of like normal in peer to peer networks that like this problem happens. Like, a long time ago, was just like the bandwidth that got used by each node connection. Today is bandwidth plus storage plus computing because of all the encryption that we do. And so typically the way to mitigate this, and like this is just like denial of service prevention, like for peer-to-peer -peer networks, is by having some kind of proof of work, uh, not the Bitcoin proof of work, uh, something lighter, which can be from like solving crypto puzzles or just like even checking half time. Like if a node is not a time for enough time to, like if a node doesn't prove that they are willing to stay up enough to download like a, a file that is large enough, then their request should be put on the queue at the bottom versus a, a node that is like requesting a smaller file. Um, I wonder if this is actually something, so I, I think like the preload nodes will continue to exist for a very long time, 
uh, they are like a way to increase the performance and the experience of the network. It's, it's, it's a great thing. Uh, I wonder if this is something that like falls within the scope of IPFS cluster, because I think like preload nodes right now are just like, like normal Go IPFS nodes, but it might be better to actually have a cluster of nodes that know how to coordinate each other versus having two or three or 10 nodes that all try to cache the same file at the same time. Um, and also do not know like anything from the requests. Um, so, so yeah, I'm not giving any answers. I'm just saying, hey, like this is normal in P2P networks. Like we need to find some ways to kind of like throttle, but like more than just IP throttling, just like rank these peers contribution to the network and like their usage of the network. And, and perhaps like a, a conversation with IPFS cluster would be good to include these set of features. Um, like if you think this is kind of like a, a pinning service kind of type of question. Um, the only exception is like we don't want to pin stuff on Pluto nodes, we just want to cache it to make it faster to load on the browser. Yeah, on the, on at least, so I think these preload nodes came like in a hurry and um, they are now pretty production-y as a service. So I'm not sure there was a lot of um, like requirements gathering <laughs> or designing around exactly what the service would look like. So it feels like maybe that's the next step. Um, for now, I, I feel like throttling does make a lot of sense, at least just to keep these nodes still functioning for the thing that we want them to function as. And then, um, yeah, maybe a, a, um, an initiative to actually just set some requirements of what a node preload cluster or otherwise would look like, um, you know, actually do a design work on that and, and then deploy that as a, as a real service. Um, so just to, to let everyone know, I am um, uh, planning on attending FOSDEM. I'll book in those tickets today, hopefully. And yay, and um, we'll be in the area for, the, for two weeks after that. Um, the second week I will be in London uh, uh, meeting with yeah um, your crew there so um, so anyway just letting everyone know I'll be physically co-located so we can maybe knock out some of this work while while we're face to face that seems to make some things go faster so um, okay so right now it feels like the good solution is to do a little bit of throttling maybe I don't know I'll do some testing on on what the right sort of delay is um, and then, and then we can like solve the problem in a more sustainable way in the future. It's up to me. Uh, I wonder like what is the size of the files that we are seeing on the, going to the preload nodes. Um, it might make sense to have some rules of thumb such as like if someone is doing a get or a cat for a file that is bigger than 10 megs, uh, or I don't know, hundred megs. Uh, it really depends. Again, like the browser is limited anyway. Um, and so like no one should be trying to like do a cat of a file that is a ter terabyte to a browser node because it will crash it, the browser node anyway. Uh, so like what is the reasonable like ceiling to make sure that like these GoIPFS nodes don't, don't spend a lifetime spinning for like this terabyte file where there is no browser then to receive a file in, uh, anymore. The weird, yeah. The we, one of the weird things about looking at the logs is that um, the overwhelming majority of the requests are um, cancels before upstream actually, they're, they're 499s. So I don't really, I don't, looking at the logs, I'm not really sure I get what it is that's happening just yet. Um, like for example, there's no user agent that's getting passed along. So I don't exactly know what, it is that's that's generating the traffic and why the ma overwhelming majority of them would be canceled before a bit even comes back to them um, anyway so so a little bit more sleuthing and um, just to like maybe some duct tape over this for now um, whatever that is I'll I'll report back <laughs> whatever I decide to do <laughs> um, throttling is probably the first thing I'll look at rather than like sniffing file size requests and stuff uh, but I'll, I'll, yeah, I'll let everyone know <laughs> what, what happens. So there's a couple of things with the preload, uh, how it works that I wanted to mention. Um, in, so it's, it happens, so it doesn't, so David was talking about it in the browser and that people shouldn't be preloading stuff in the browser, but it is not restricted to 
running in the browser if you're running a JS node, JS IPFS node in Node.js, then preload will also still happen. Um, so, so there's that, and there's no kind of restriction currently on what is um, if, what is being preloaded. So if you try and get anything, then it will try and preload that. If you try try and add anything, then it will also try and preload that. If you have stuff in your MFS, every every thirty seconds or so, it will um, it will try and preload your MFS root uh, if it's changed. Um, and so that was originally a problem uh, with I know Alex. It was had npm uh, on IPFS preloading the MFS root, the whole of npm <laughs> for a while until we disabled that. Uh, so that was probably not helping. Um, but in terms of like um, the preload requests being cancelled, they are done asynchronously. So if you throttle them, then that would be okay for the node in, because there's no like the user isn't waiting for the whatever they ask for to come back before they continue. So so that would be okay. Um, uh, and uh, another thing about throttling, what was I going to say? Um, uh, it's completely gone. Uh, I'm around, so if it comes back, yeah, <laughs> we'll we'll talk about it. But just just there, just some things to know. Oh, uh, the thing about um, the requests being cancelled immediately, it could possibly be because it's w probably worth checking that these IP addresses aren't like our own IP addresses, because it could maybe it's coming from our testing servers, and we are spinning up IPFS nodes that have preload enabled, and we're adding test data two things on Jenkins and it's trying to be preloaded on the preload nodes. Um, that could happen. That just literally just occurred to me. Um, so that could be happening when you stop an IPFS node, it will cancel all of those requests for preload. So, um, so that could be, that could explain it. It definitely does seem like it's somebody that's trying to dev something. Um, it's not IPs that I am aware of that I maintain myself at least. Um, you know, there's, it's like, yeah, the okay. last one I looked up was coming from a WeWork um, <laughs> location. So okay. anyone in a WeWork right now? No, okay. <laughs> okay, yeah, just, just throwing out ideas. And yes, to David, we can just, pre we should just preload, um, disable preloading on testing. Um, and we should also, I think um, actually Jacob went through and disabled all the bootstrap servers for tests that don't need, need them. So our tests don't try and connect to the bootstrap servers. Um, so yeah, that's another thing we can do. Anyway, they were just my thoughts. Sorry to make everyone listen to that. <laughs> uh, we are like five minutes over, so um, sorry, I completely lost track of time. It's really nice to talk to you all. And um, if you have anything else to say, let's take it offline. Um, and thank you all for coming. And I'll see you again next week for another exciting round of JS IPSS. Uh, what we did last week, what we got blocked on, and what we're gonna do this week. Cool, all right, bye everyone.